there there was nothing for me. There had never been even any mention of anything about, gee, you know what, if you lose your mom when you're seven years old, you might have some issues later in life. It was just, your mom died, go to school. And back then, we didn't go to therapy. The only people that went to therapy were really crazy. And there were no support groups. And my dad didn't want to talk about it. No one wanted to talk about it then. And it was almost shameful. I don't know if any of you experienced that, but as a girl, you know, when I was in second grade, which is when it happened, my teacher knew about it, but none of the people in my class knew about it, and I didn't want them to know, because as soon as you tell anyone, oh yeah, my mom died, you get that look, you know, look, oh, you poor thing, and they're like, I don't want that look, <laughs> you know, it just made me feel horrible, and it, it wasn't a helpful thing, so it was almost better if people just didn't know. And then I had a stepmom, so she was just my mom. And I have a mom, and now everything seems normal. So it, my mother was not talking about in my household, there were no photos of her, because, you know, now I have a new mom, and we don't want to hurt new mom's feelings. So no photos of my mom. I have very little of her of things. I have this necklace, which is a beautiful little diamond, and some earrings, and that's about it. So when this book came along and I read it, I was just crying almost the whole time. A lot of people told me that they can't even read it or they open it and they throw it across the room. <laughs> Not because it was so badly written, <laughs> but because it was so painful. And uh, I found it painful and I cried. And I felt like someone for the first time in my life, and I think how old was I then? I don't know, 20, 30, 30, 30. <laughs> um, so, but that's funny too, because I totally don't look 32 anymore. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I feel like finally someone understood me and knew what it was like to be me. And so I contacted. Hope and the Motherless Daughters Organization, and that, well, then it was 1996, so the book had been out for two years, and I'd come to the a little bit. And it was fun, and that again, it said there was a support group somewhere in Seattle, but it didn't say anything about Los Angeles. And I'm, I'm a psychotherapist, and I was like, you know what, this would be a really good thing to help you. And I think I might be a good person to lead it. Although one, oh, one lady in one of the groups said, you know, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> I'm not over that. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but seriously, do you want a lady that's had her mother all of her life to help you with this? I don't know. Anyway, so I started the first group in 1996 here in Los Angeles. And I've been running groups for my lowest daughters ever since. And I'm still doing so. And individual therapy as well. And then we've had this event every year in Los Angeles since 1997. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> And some of you have come to this event every year since then. Some of you have come from as far as Texas today to be here, which is pretty amazing. Um, and it makes me feel great to, to be able to provide this kind of a, a forum for us, especially during this weekend when it's so hard since Mother's Day is tomorrow. For those of you who aren't mothers yet, it's really, very really hard. So, um, so with no further ado, I would like to introduce to you the rock star of Motherless Daughters, <laughs> Hope Adelman. Thank you, Irene, so much. First, I want to thank Irene for 16 years of dedicated service to Motherless for being a resource person and a go-to person for uh, women in other cities who want to start support groups or who email me and need further more support than I'm able to give them at the time. She's been really wonderful in that way. It's so funny that you call me a rock star, Irene, because I told my husband shortly after we met, <clears throat> he thought, wow, I'm marrying this famous author. I said, oh, honey. I said, you know what? 98% of women in America have no idea who I am, but to those other 2% I'm a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming out today. I, um, I woke up this morning and I thought, how wonderful that luncheons are happening today. Still happening since we did the first one, I believe in New York in 1996, which is when we test drove the idea 
then they started filtering out to other cities around the country. I know for sure there are elections going on today in Orange County, California, in Detroit, in other cities all around America. But there are lots of women who live in cities where there aren't any elections happening today or aren't any support groups. So this morning I had the idea to go to my Facebook page and the Motherless Daughters Facebook page and start an online circle of remembrance there. So if you'd like to join that later today, you can. Um, by the time I left in just half an hour, there were dozens of women already posting their names and their mom's names to honor her today. And we're passing it on to their friends, too, to come and, and join us. So we have, uh, through Facebook, um, a whole online network today of women all around the country joining in the circles to honor their moms. It has been 18 years, so hard for me to believe, since Motherless Daughters was first released. I was just a little, you know, 24-year-old, because now I'm only 29. <laughs> I guess that actually that would have made me 11 when the book came out. Um, 18 years since Motherless Daughters first came out, 1994. How many of you got the book when it first came out, do you know? You'll know because you'll own the hardcover. And it was only out for one year. Um, and then 95 was the paperback. And if you've bought your book more recently, you've gotten the second edition, which came out in 2006. So it's been six years since the book was updated because it had been out at that time for 12 years and we needed to put more current information in it. Um, so some of you may have found it when it was first released, others not until later, when someone told you that you should read it perhaps or, or gave it to you as a gift, which happens a lot. Um, or when the very unfortunate need for the book arose, if any of you have lost your mothers fairly recently. My own mother died in 1981. I was a, uh, in between my junior and senior years in high school, so I was 17 years old. She was 41. When I was 17, 41 seemed like she was practically elderly, right? Like she was, you know, she was on her way to the, to the retirement home, it seemed to me. When I turned 41 myself, and then 42, the age she was when she died, I realized how incredibly young my mother was and how much she had lost. Uh, it was, so she, I was 17 when she passed on. It, it was about almost 13 years later that I published the book. I had spent most of that time looking for this book. I had gone to bookstores when I was a teenager. I had gone into my college library late at night when I was done studying. I was looking for a book that would explain to me what it had meant, really, and what it would mean to me for the rest of my life to have lost my mom at such an early age. And there were only books about what it was like to be an adult when your mom died, because statistically, that was more common. But I knew there were women out there like me, because I knew just a handful of them myself who had revealed to me or whose moms had died in the course of our friendship. And so, I set out to write the book myself. It helped that I was in a graduate writing program at the time and, and had professors around who were wonderful and very willing to help me, one of whom was a motherless daughter herself. So the book came out in 1994, and since then I've traveled around the world, really, speaking to groups of motherless women and hearing their stories. The book is now out in 17 countries. It's been translated into 12 languages, including Korean, Chinese, Czech, French, Italian, German, Polish. I love the letters, now emails, that I get from women all around the world talking about the book and how it's touched them. There are different cultural experiences that women will have depending on where they live or, or the, their culture of origin, but underneath it all, you know, the stories are all the same. It doesn't matter if a woman's writing to me from Korea or writing to me from Poland, she's really telling the same story, which drives home what a universal experience this is and what a profound and, and fundamental experience it is for women of any background. Uh, after Motherless Daughters came out, I published two more books on mother loss. Some of you might be uh, familiar with them. Letters from Motherless Daughters was a collection of the stories that women were sending me. When they read Motherless Daughters, they felt that someone finally was interested in hearing their story. And this was, believe it or not, before the internet, really. I didn't have an email yet. And and neither did most Americans. So some very you know, savvy women, hundreds of them in fact, discovered they could write to me care of the publisher. And they sent me letters typed or handwritten, beautiful stories, sometimes 10 pages long, just detailing from the time that their mothers had gotten sick or died all the way to the present. So Letters from Motherless Daughters was a collection, an edited collection of those stories so that their stories could be told in full instead of just just, instead of my just plucking out little pieces of it for chapters. 
Um, and then Motherless Mothers came out in 2006, which was a book that was born out of my own experience as a mother. My first daughter was born in 97, my second daughter in 2001. And I hadn't really understood when I wrote Motherless Daughters what it would mean to be a mother without a mother. And as I started raising my own daughters, and by that time I knew a lot of motherless daughters and talking with them about the experience of motherhood, I realized there was another book waiting to be written.